I know you all see all the headlines and articles on YouTube saying I moved abroad, I left the U.S. or or various other reasons of why you should leave the U.S. or why you should move to this country, that country. But after 15 minutes of watching a video, you realize you wasted your 15 minutes because they never told you how to do it. Well, I'm going to give you some examples of how I've actually did it and how other people that I know have done it. I myself, I had this issue when I was looking for information on actually how to leave the U.S. And it was right after the pandemic, right after, you know, civil unrest, the cost of living was going up. Everything was getting out of hand in the U.S. And I couldn't find any valuable information on how to actually do it. What were the steps? What were the options? And so through my experience of actually leaving the U.S., I'm going to give you 10 ways on how to accomplish this. Now, I've split these 10 ways up to move abroad into two categories. First, with a job, which is preferable. And second, without a job. We'll cover the with a job category first. The very first way and the easiest way to me is to apply to a job within your company that is actually located abroad. And this is specifically true if you work in the corporate world. So you go to your employer's internal career page. You see if there's any jobs located in the company that you you want to experience for a couple years and then apply for those jobs. So this accomplishes two things. First, it actually showcases your company that you actually want to grow within the company by taking an assignment abroad. This also gives you international experience and how other subsidiaries or different branches of the company actually operate. Secondly, your employer will generally cover your moving expenses, which trust me, from my experience, they can get really costly. I'm talking 20, 30 grand for a family of four. Now I know many people have done such thing, especially in the US. I have former colleagues that have moved to the UK, Australia, Germany, you know, keeping in mind that this not this does not have to be the end all be all your or your final move after you move abroad. This can be like your stepping stone. You get your feet wet. See how you in, enjoy the different culture. And, you know, especially if you're in the U.S. with the thing, how the way things are going, it gets you out of the U.S. in the immediate. Number two. The second way is to actually apply for remote positions within your company or as a contractor. Now, I caveat this by saying I generally see this in the tech field. You know, people in cybersecurity, artificial intelligence, software engineering. And it's solely because that these jobs are in such high demand, especially cybersecurity. Therefore, companies have been willing to let these tech folks kind of work wherever they want to remotely. Basically, it's economics, high demand, low supply. In other fields, you generally just don't have this option. Many companies now, especially after COVID and and they realizing they were losing money from having all these remote workers and their property values and from the buildings that they owned were going down the tube. They wanted everybody to come back to the office. And a lot of careers, especially when you were happily, you can show that you can happily do this, this job remotely. These companies realize they don't give a damn. They want you to come in the office for that reason so they can show value in the property that they've that they own and that they've you know built or the sites that they've built and etc also in the end you know once your company allows you to work from abroad you can obtain a letter from the employer that states that hey i'm a remote employee i'm allowed to work outside of the us or from another country or whatever and this will actually set you up nicely for work visas in many countries. Just Google it. I'm sure you can find it. And we have them in Portugal, where I'm currently located. I've seen them in Spain. I've seen them in Thailand. I've seen them all over the place. They all have different requirements. They all have different times to process them. But this will set you up nicely for that. The third way is to actually apply for jobs at various companies within your field which are actually located abroad. Now, I won't go into too much detail on this one because it's pretty straightforward. 
You apply for the jobs in your field in that, in that specific country that you want to be in. Now, this can take some time because I myself have successfully done this. I've been offered positions in various countries that I ultimately turned down um, for various reasons. I've been a finalist for other positions in various countries. So I know that this works, but this requires some patience as it may take some time for you to get that bite in fishing terms. You also have to have the requisite experience to be able to use this method. So please don't go blindly applying to random jobs across the globe that you have no experience in or that is beyond your field. Number four is to move abroad as a consultant. Now you can do this one or two ways. The first way is working through an employment agency, temporary services, company, and etc. The second way is via creating your own company, kind of what my wife and I did where my wife was actually able to transfer her current full-time position into a consultancy position. And because of this, we were able to move abroad, which still allowed her to continue to work with her former employer, use her expertise and etc. Now, I want to say that this actually comes with some caveats. Firstly, it can be a bit risky and sometimes it only gives you about six months to a year leeway some companies are strange i'm not gonna lie they can decide that hey i probably don't need this person anymore or they may decide i want control over this person and i want to hire someone in-house to do the job that will actually come on site so that i can monitor them but i do like i said i do want to note that it's a risk and you know once you have your company up and running uh, or your consultancy up and running you can apply for a, a bunch of different consultancy positions within different companies you can go on from contract to contract and etc and and as a way to kind of fund your living expenses abroad now it's a bit easier for us uh, my family and i because i'm my actual attorney and so i was able to review some of the contracts for the company setting up my llc to get it you know get the company registered at the state business registration office setting up management agreements for our company and etc all this stuff is technical so keep in mind that there would be an extra expense to hire an attorney to actually do this well i recommend you hire an attorney and if you don't you can go to like rocket lawyer and get the forms and legal zoom and all those type of websites that i'm not affiliated with to get your agreement and to get everything kind of up and running the fifth one is particularly if you're in the medical field. For example, if you are a nurse and you have a job where you can work on and off for a couple months, on and off for a couple weeks, whatever. So for example, you spend three months working in the US and then two or three months in your new country because you can make so much more money in the US and especially if you keep your living expenses low in the US, i.e. you don't have this gigantic mortgage and whatnot, you can buy a house and etc or rent a house in another country and because the cost of living is so low you're set now my wife and i actually know a few families that actually do this so for example i have a friend that's a firefighter out of california and he he currently spends for example three weeks working in california and then two weeks off and during those two weeks he's back in portugal with his family Number six, creating your own company. Now, this can be anything. I'm talking about online businesses, drop shipping, clothing stores, of which I have one. A little shameless plug here. But I won't go into a detail about what your potential options should be. But what I can say and I recommend to do is to wait till you're actually making money and that it's coming in consistently before you actually decide to move abroad. So many people have moved abroad and their online business have completely failed while they're abroad. And ultimately they ran out of money and had to go back to their country. So just remember, make sure it's profitable before you embark on your new journey. The next four ways that I'll talk about are without a job. So number seven, turning your current home into a rental property. So I like to use this because most people don't even think about this as an option 
to get out of their, their current country and to move abroad. A lot of these countries, when it comes to obtaining resident visas, requires you to show some income, like the D7 and D8 visas here in Portugal. So if you can show that, hey, I have 2000 coming in from renting my house, uh, that's all they're going to care about. And that will qualify you for a resident visa in another country. Because in certain countries, the average monthly salary is quite low, especially compared to the U.S., here in Portugal, the average salary for a month is about $1,000. So that's something to consider when you're deciding to choose a particular country to actually reduce your cost of living, to increase your safety, your quality of life, or lastly, a place that where you can get inexpensive health care, especially when you're getting up in age. Spain also is a great option for this too. Number eight, attending the school abroad. Now, I've taken this route too. I lived in Australia for a year where I actually completed my master's of law degree. Now, I researched schools in the countries and areas that I wanted to potentially be in, including Spain, it included um, Australia, and you apply to those positions and you get in or you don't. But luckily, I was able to get in. I got accepted and I moved. Now, a couple of things that I first want to touch on. Number one, that uh, it actually gives you ex uh, education abroad with the international spin slash experience. And generally, the cost of education is way cheaper than the U.S. And I have tons of tons of student loans from the U.S. And compared to being abroad, it was way cheaper than abroad. The second thing that's important point that I want to kind of point out is that you usually have your student visa and along with that student visa, the government actually gives you a work visa as well to go along with that student visa. It may take some time, especially in my situation in Australia, it took a little bit of time before I got my work visa, but ultimately you can attain your work visa and keep your costs low by working while you're in that country. And the last major benefit that I want to talk about to me, which is like the thing generally gives you a certain amount of time uh, and opportunity to actually get a green card or a resident card in that country, which you can actually turn into a citizenship. So, for example, when I was in Australia, which was around 2008. The law at that time was if I stayed at least two years while studying, it would have significantly boosted my points on the skilled migration visa application for Australia, which basically would allow me to stay in Australia after completing two years of school there. And then I could have, you know, went the whole route and getting citizenship and etc. So for various reasons, I left after a year mainly because I completed my degree in one year. So I didn't take advantage of this, but I have seen many of countries, especially countries that use the point system for migrants to come in and immigrants to come in. This will greatly benefit you if you decide to take this route. Number nine, reaching fire. So fire is financial independence, retire early. I won't go into full detail about this one because there are tons and tons of videos about fire on YouTube and etc. And even early on in our journey, we, we ran across a YouTube channel that talked about fire and we had, we had no idea what this movement was, but basically what it is, just high level is that you live off your investments to kind of fund your lifestyle for the rest of your life. And you never have to work again i.e. retiring. And I know that there are quite a few people on YouTube that have actually done this, that are retired in their 30s or before 30s because they made great investments while they were younger. Your number for retirement may be different than other people. And it's also based on your living expenses. If you're in a cheaper country, your number may be way lower than especially living in the U.S. where you would need millions and millions of dollars to retire. Because the cost of living is so expensive. So 
you know that's one thing that you look in, you can look into you know do more research on it there's a lot of good youtube videos on this subject on the fire movement but it's a good option it's something you can look into and since you're retired it qualifies you for a myriad of you know different visas retirement visas I mean, you know, some actually require you to be a certain age but you know it requires at least it gives you the option and then with your investment you can pull some of that money out especially if you're doing well buy a house and then that qualifies you for you know uh residency by investment i.e you buy a property and you know now you're a resident and you can eventually qualify for citizenship so the last one i'll talk about is what i like to call partial fire so this one i can kind of speak to about from my personal experience as well as my family and i have quote unquote achieved partial fire or what i like to call fire with the double r um i'm still shopping this by the way but i call it financial independence rat race exit so basically this is what i like to call uh fu money is that I have enough money to say, you know, F this, I, I don't need this job, I don't need this stress, I don't need this crazy way of life or ways of doing things or the cost of living or whatever. I can say I'm leaving, I'm gone, I'm going to try something different for a little bit, you know, until I see fit. In short, you've basically achieved some form of fire, but not with the intention of retiring. And you still want to find ways to work, bring in income. You still want to be, you know, in that mode. But you want to do it at your own pace. You have a nice little nest egg that you can, you know, can, can suffice you for a little bit, cover some of your living expensive costs until you find your passion in life or find a country cheap enough that you can actually qualify for what I like to call normal fire. So there you have it. 10 ways on how you can actually move abroad. The last thing that I want to impart on you is to actually try some of these methods. I have done so myself. They have worked. I know other people that have done these particular methods or, uh, you know, options and they have worked, but take these methods, try them, move abroad, go and experience life in another country, taste the food, enjoy the new culture just live i mean and but it has just been so eye-opening and i always implore people to get out and travel live in other places because it for me it makes a it makes people more well-rounded and, and just better human beings overall and then the last thing that i want to mention is that look once you tried if it doesn't work out you can always go back home. There's nothing preventing you from going back home. I never see the, I never see anything as a failure. It's, everything's a learning experience. And what I've generally seen, especially in the U.S., is that when people go out and, and decide to experience something new and then they, for whatever reason, decide that, hey, it's not working for me, and they go back home, they generally end up making more money. Check it out. Make the move. Get out there and experience and, you know, let me know how it works. For everyone that's stuck around this far, thank you. I hope that this information is useful because this is from my personal experiences or actual firsthand accounts of people that we know that have done these. And if I left anything out, you know, just leave them in the comment section below. And if you have any questions, you know, add them to that comment section. Thank you. Peace.